The Lord is risen. Alleluia. Happy Easter to you, brothers and sisters. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. According to today's Gospel, the tomb of Jesus was found empty. Mary of Magdala saw that the stone sealing the tomb had been removed, so she ran and reported it to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. Going to the tomb, they saw the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Friends, it is a sign that Jesus gave his disciples. His body was not stolen. He will return and see them again. Indeed, he has risen, as he said. In the coming days, we will witness how the risen one reunited with his disciples. But for now, let us celebrate the power of God in Jesus' resurrection. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The Word of the Lord. Lord has made, let us rejoice. 
field is rejected, has become the cornerstone. The Lord has this been done, it is wonderful in our eyes. It is wonderful in our eyes. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The Word of the Lord. The longing to see. I guess it is part of our human existence to long to see. And even those with a physical uh, difficulties with seeing, they can still see with their hearts, with their hands. And there's always this longing to behold the truth, and especially to behold the Lord. This is one grace that the Lord gives us. May we give ourselves also the opportunity to respond to this gift. In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Peter describes his journey in seeing. As one of the 12 apostles and even one of the small group of three disciples privileged to have witnessed some significant moments of Jesus' ministry, he had seen a lot. The good works of Jesus, the miracles of Jesus, oh, how privileged Peter was in seeing. But in the history of Peter, we also know that there were moments of not seeing. Even if the Lord was already manifesting deep truths about himself and the kingdom, his disciples, including Peter, failed to see. His denial of Jesus was, of course, the apex of this blindness, of this, lo of this loss of sight and understanding. But in the testimony of Peter now, after the resurrection, he recounts all of this and then reaches the point where people put Jesus to death, but God raised him from the dead, and Jesus made himself seen, but not by all, but by some disciples whom he had chosen. Look at this. Jesus also longed to be seen by his disciples. It was not only the disciples that longed to see him. It is not only us who long to see Jesus. Jesus longs to see us. And in the meeting of these two sights and visions, we have the eruption of light and truth. Now, Peter wants others to see Jesus too by giving a testimony to the person, the ministry, and the kingship of Jesus.
My dear brothers and sisters, this is important. Jesus longs to see us. God wants to see us. Will we allow him to find us? And after seeing him, let us ask the, the Lord to give us the grace to make others see the Lord too. In the second reading, a reflection on what I might call the spirituality of Easter, St. Paul tells the Corinthians, now that uh, we have been baptized, reborn in Christ, no, our life must also change. And he uses the image of yeast. What makes us grow? And what do we allow <laughs> uh, in the world to take over us and to determine our growth? Well, the old yeast of corruption and wickedness, according to St. Paul, should disappear. We should not allow our sight into reality to be dictated by corruption and wickedness. Instead, sincerity and truth should prevail. That's how Jesus sees us. That's how we should see the world. That's how we should see reality if we are already baptized and reborn in Jesus' light. So, dear brothers and sisters, let us constantly long to look at the world with the eyes of Jesus, the eyes of truth, and sincerity. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to John on the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. The Longing to See. Easter is a feast of seeing, of appearing, being made to see and seeing or failing to see. And this is the grace that we want to ask the Lord, that we may see us as he sees us and sees the world. In the first reading, we have the, the beautiful discourse of St. Peter about his vision, how he saw Jesus. But also, we, 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 are, um, uh, um, we know very well, we're aware of Peter's own blindness, but in the resurrection, Jesus made himself seen by his disciples. And Jesus, who longed to see his disciples, has opened their eyes. They see who he is now. St. Peter now, through his testimony and preaching, satisfies the longing of people to see God to see God in Jesus. In the second reading, St. Paul reminds us that as a people reborn at Easter, we should be careful that our lives, our vision, uh, should not be influenced anymore by corruption and wickedness. But we should look at the world from the prism of truth and sincerity. 
We should long, we should long to see the Lord as the Lord sees us. In the Gospel from St. John, the figure of Mary of Magdala going to the tomb that early morning in order to see the body of her Lord. Now, what was the secret of this longing to see the Lord, of this fearless act? It was dangerous for her to go to the tomb and then expose herself to the authorities for being one of Jesus' closest disciples. Well, she could not help it because as a woman, according to the gospel, from whom seven demons, evil spirits, had been cast out, meaning she was sick, severely sick, but healed by Jesus, this is her act of gratitude. The Lord saw her. The Lord loved her. The Lord liberated her by seeing her. And now, as an act of gratitude, she always sees the Lord. She, her gaze is on the Lord. And even in his burial, her passion to see the Lord was there. It is a response to the Lord who has seen her with love. But the tomb was empty. And she failed to see yet, at this time, the meaning of that empty tomb. So she ran to Peter, Simon Peter, and the, the beloved disciple to report it. And look at Peter and the disciple loved by Jesus. They saw. Now, the, the beloved disciple saw not only the burial cloths, but most especially the cloth that covered the head, folded, rolled up, and separate from the other burial cloths. He saw, and he saw more than the cloth. He saw what the Lord was doing. A fulfillment of his words. I will return. He saw that there was no theft. He saw that Jesus was alive. He saw that Jesus was fulfilling his promise. He saw and believed. Love made him long to see the Lord. Love made him see what the Lord was doing and accomplishing in simple signs like a folded cloth. Those who long to see the Lord will be attentive to the many, many signs of his presence. What do we long to see? Is the Lord one of those whom we want to see? For we see what we long to see. If we long to see controversy, negativity, that is what we will see. But if we long to see the Lord and the new life, the new world, the new existence, truth and sincerity that is working out before our midst, we will see that by God's grace. So let us allow the Lord to see us. And upon seeing us with gratitude, let us also long to see Him. The Word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. Mary of Magdala is a prominent figure during Easter. In the Gospel according to John, Mary was the first person to discover that Jesus' tomb was empty. Mary was also the first person to whom the risen Christ appeared as recounted in the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of John tells us that Mary mistook Jesus for a gardener, but he called her by her name and she recognized him. We can learn a couple of things from the Easter experience of Mary of Magdala. Today's Gospel says of her,
the Bible tells us that Mary remained in Jesus' company from the time she followed him during his public ministry up to his crucifixion. The fact that she came to the tomb that morning shows her devotion to Jesus, who emptied her of fear of those who put Jesus to death. Was there something to fear about them? The Bible notes that the Pharisees did not stop at getting Jesus crucified. They also sought Pilate's approval to seal the tomb. They spread the fake news and later on threatened the disciples. So we can say that going to the tomb during that time was really a fearless act on the part of Mary. If there was one thing that Mary might have feared, it was the thought of being away from Jesus which her words in the tomb express. But Jesus will not let Mary wallow in that fear, so he revealed to her the resurrection and sent her to deliver the good news to her fellow disciples. Friends, we can take the cue from Mary of Magdala. We can be fearless because Jesus' tomb is empty. Jesus is risen. And Jesus is sending us to one another to fearlessly testify to his resurrection. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, how have you experienced the power of love over sin? Paano mo naranasan ang kapangyarihan ng pag-ibig laban sa kasalanan? The second point is, how can we testify credibly to Jesus' resurrection in a cynical and skeptical world? Paano tayo makapagbibigay ng mabisang pagsaksi sa muling pagkabuhay ni Jesus sa mundong kulang na kulang sa paniniwala? Heavenly Father, you have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, Please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed.